Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today's February 10th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. We got the Pacific Northwest, and you see all this blue here across Canada and down across portions of Montana. That is the very cold ground surface the infrared satellite imagery is picking up on. You can also see how it picks up the very coldest of the cloud tops and shows those as green to us as well. So we're gonna have cold air in place here and a Pacific storm moving towards the west coast of North America. How far north will that precipitation get? What form of precipitation will it be and when will we warm up here in the pacific northwest all good questions we'll take a look at that here as we go through the video this morning and again a closer look there is still some showers out and about there maybe a, an inch or two across some of the higher terrain but pretty light elsewhere and you can see again the cold uh, not the cloud tops but the surface temperatures there across the interior of canada and alberta there in montana as well so if you want to help support that channel, uh, a nice affordable home weather station, uh, and you get 10% off on it as well, click on that link down below to do so. Great smartphone app. You can have this up and running in minutes. Very fun weather station. I check it first thing in the morning just to see what the temperature is outside. Fun stuff. Now look at Seattle National Weather Service. This is something new the National Weather Service has been doing here for a few months. Cold weather advisory for much of Western Washington. You see they do highlight some of the wind chill readings out there. So yeah, relative to where you are living you wouldn't see 15 to 20 degree wind chills trigger this cold weather advisory for western montana for example and so far this winter we have been above average uh, relatively speaking over the entire pacific northwest i know the last few weeks have been chilly but still just shows you how warm the winter has been so far and this goes from december 11th and yeah so kind of a mixed bag out there for Western Washington, Western Oregon, but the vast majority of the Pacific Northwest has been above average this winter. Now, taking a look at what is going on right now, big ridge up across Alaska, cold north flow, allowing that cooler air to get back down across the Pacific Northwest. And then we start to wait for this next system here. What track is this going to take? That track is going to mean a lot for us here, especially west of the Cascades and what kind of precipitation we can expect. So we're going to dive into that here in a bit of detail. And then we scroll off in towards next weekend and we start to get a bit of a pattern change here. This one is going to be more the southwesterly flow. We're going to start to warm things up for places west of the Cascades, especially Seattle and Portland. This next system should be rain. Now, taking a look at precipitable water, what I want to show you here is this very dry air mass settling down across Pacific Northwest. Chapstick, Carmex, lotion, get it out because the, the air is very dry that's moving over us right now. And when you bring that very dry air into your house and you heat it, the relative humidity goes down even more. So watch out for the static electricity shocks and whatnot with that. Nosebleeds and stuff of that nature. Uh, the initial slug of moisture moves down into California. Mid-latitude cyclone somewhere towards the California-Oregon border. It starts to spread moisture back up again across the region how far north will that get we'll take a look at that here in a moment and then the next system will start to warm us up out across the pacific bringing that southwesterly flow could bring some freezing rain for some of the passes and where the cold air is still trapped initially with that system we'll check that out as well now, if we take a look at the latest European model run here, so again, a few showers as we go through the day today, wrapping that up as we go through tomorrow morning, first slug of moisture into California, then the storm system comes rolling into Southern Oregon. This starts on Thursday morning. You're talking about Medford getting again some snowfall, some freezing rain potentially up into the Cascades where it is trapped, lower level cold air is in there. Look at some of the ice pellets, formerly known as sleet, showing up in the yellow, and then some of the snow and freezing rain moves up the Willamette Valley at times on the day Thursday. Uh, the precipitation totals don't look that impressive. There's going to be a lot of east winds and the air mass is very dry here. So uh, it's still, uh, there's some discrepancy on just how much freezing rain or snow is going to fall with this system. And you can see the European as of last night does not bring snow towards Seattle. I'm always a little bit skeptical of that because uh, sometimes these air masses do allow for that snow to get a bit further north. But again, the precipitation values aren't that much for Seattle on any of the models. And then you see the freezing rain holding on to Friday morning. We really got to watch that across some of the Willamette Valley. It could be another nice snowmaker there for places like Medford, some of Rogue Valley, Southwest Oregon, before finally things warm up as you go through Thursday night. And then the system pivots across eastern Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana as we go through the day Friday. Could be some snowfall down towards Boise as you go through Friday night. And that system kicks out of here. Then we bring the next system in here and maybe a little bit of freezing precipitation trapped in some of the Cascades and whatnot. But this system should warm us up as we go through the upcoming weekend and bring rain back to places like 
Seattle and Portland. Now, GFS, hot off the presses here. 12Z run. So showers wrapping up this morning. Initial slug into California. Then we bring the next system in here. And again, look at this. Starts on Thursday morning for some of Southwest Oregon. And again, shows that freezing rain potential as we go through the day Thursday. Continues to bring the precipitation northbound. And again, the freezing rain there kind of trapped in some of the coastal range and in some of the Willamette Valley. Snow moves across Southwest Washington and just does clip Seattle here on this morning's GFS run. So again, we'll watch that very closely as we start to get towards some of the high resolution models coming in here. Uh, mainly on the day Thursday night and into Friday for Seattle. And then you can see the system pivot across the region. You've got to watch out for accumulating snowfalls east of the Cascades, Idaho, and some of the Rocky Mountains as well. And then good model agreement that the next system, although it may start as freezing rain like the Gorge or some of the Cascade passes, there should be rain for Seattle and Portland as we go on in through the later portion of the week and, and through next week. And we start to get back to some more normal weather here across the region. So quickly on the GFS, I'll just scroll through here this and uh, at least this morning's run kind of shows some of that ice accumulation across a lot of that coastal range there and into some of the Willamette Valley. It does show some snow here for the Portland Metro and Southwest Washington. I'll show you that here in a moment. And if we look at the European accumulated freezing rain, if we scroll through here, you'll see this does highlight the Willamette Valley a little bit more here. Some areas getting up towards a half an inch of glaze, which can start to cause some issues, but it does show some snow for the Portland Metro as well. So we're kind of dealing with the fine line here, what kind of precipitation types we are expecting. Now, looking at the European, let's take a look at this. It's not predicting a widespread snowfall by any stretch of the imagination west of the Cascades, but places like Portland and some maybe Kelso, you could get a couple inches out of this according to the European. But the GFS has a bit of a snowier picture, and I'll scroll through this really quick. You can see, you know, Portland picking up, you know, maybe a couple, two, three inches up towards southwest Washington, Chehalis, two, three inches. And, and some kind of a dusting here for Seattle, a little bit more towards Tacoma and Olympia, again, depending on how just how far north that snow band gets. Look at these nice amounts across the Cascades of Oregon, some of the southern Washington Cascades also. As the storm is on this southerly track, how far north will that band of snowfall get? Good question. Now, if we take a look what's coming here over the next few days, you see clearly we have the strong offshore flow that's going to keep the chilly air around. Storm system moves into the coast and it's really going to be bringing the winds out here. This pressure gradient is going to be out of the east, across the coastal range, the gorge there, Stampede Gap is going to be roaring as we go on in through the day Thursday. It's also going to cause some, you know, very dry, it's going to have this very dry air across the region, but there's going to be some compressional warming off the Cascades and whatnot. So what precipitation and what moisture does move in there is going to have to saturate the column of the atmosphere. And that might be kind of a tall task the further you get north, you get up towards Seattle, for example. That's why some of the precipitation amounts have been on the lower side. And then as we go towards the weekend, we start to warm things up. You can see the southerlies all the way up past Haida Gwaii there, up the BC coastline. Now, dew point temperature, Put this in a motion, you can just kind of show you the dry air around the region here. First slug of moisture down into California, then the mid-latitude cyclone starts to move in. And you can see it start to moisten up the air mass a bit here as it pivots across Oregon and out towards portions east. Now, uh, this is about 900 millibars, so we're looking a little bit further up in the atmosphere. You can clearly see the offshore winds, the east winds roaring across the region. Just kind of pointing again. Look at how strong some of this easterly flow is, very dry flow. So it's going to be tough to bring that moisture northward towards western Washington. If we look at 850 millibars, you'll notice a similar picture with the offshore winds in the meantime as that system arrives as we go through the day Thursday. Now, I picked this one uh, for the uh, foothills there uh, just off to the east of Seattle. And you can see the dew point temperature here, and there's the, te uh, the temperature line is in red. So when you bring these together, you have a condensation, basically. You know, you've saturated the atmosphere. This is way up over 30,000 feet. But look at the lower levels. This is very dry air. So you can imagine as that moisture moves northbound, there's going to be a lot of evaporative cooling. A lot of this precipitation will be evaporating before it ever even reaches the ground. Um, but yeah, that's what we're dealing with coming up here. Very dry air mass. It's going to be tough to get that precipitation northbound. I know I've said that a few times already, but now looking here as we go through the day today, uh, again, just a few showers across the southern Washington Cascades, maybe towards the coastal range of Oregon, and then we get that initial slug of moisture into California there as well. So just kind of wrap it up what is going on today. You can kind of see at the very end of the run, our models start to pick up, the high resolution models picking up on that storm system moving towards the Oregon coast. And one more look at the dry air. I just like to play this through a 60 hour loop. You can see the storm system trying to move in here with the very dry air mass in place. 
place. Now, uh, we've skipped that one for now. We'll look at total precipitation in inches on the European. We'll show you the problem here as the storm system moves in. Again, the precipitation amounts are not looking that impressive here across much of the region. But as of last night, it did show, you know, a tenth of an inch getting up there for Seattle. So we'll, we'll just watch that snow line very closely. And we still have a few days to figure this out. It's only Monday. The system is not progged to come in until Thursday morning. Also, the very cold apparent temperatures. This is taking wind chill factor into account. I guess we go through tomorrow morning. A lot of areas, eastern Washington and Oregon, are below zero Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit as far as the uh, um, wind chill factor is concerned. And you can see some teens, I guess some single digits in towards the Fraser River Valley there as well, into the teens with the Lamb Valley there. Also, the coastal range very chilly. You get out to the coast, you think you might be a bit warmer, but not with this offshore flow, some of these wind chills into the teens as we go through tomorrow morning. And then we go to Wednesday morning and something very similar. Look at this widespread below zero Fahrenheit height wind chills for eastern Washington and eastern Oregon across the higher terrain and yeah, some single digits may even be out there at times for western Washington. And just a reminder, if uh, you guys know if you're around the gorge area, there's a sea level gap and that cold air can get pulled through there quite easily. So sometimes that cold air is stubborn and it likes to hang around longer than the models say it will. And this is what we're dealing with with some of these freezing rain events. I showed you all that east wind pouring out through the gorge and you got some of that warm air riding up over the top of it. So that's what kind of classifies those freezing rain events for the Portland Metro. And I mentioned this several times already, but just kind of showing you a visual diagram of the downsloping winds coming off some of the mountain ranges there, very dry air can make it difficult for some of that precipitation to reach the ground, especially the further east you get towards the foothills or the Cascades. Now look at the National Blender model. It's been showing this the last few days. And again, it's going to be very cold. Some of the, the outright temperatures are going to be near zero Fahrenheit for Spokane and the wind chills, of course, will be even worse. Seattle, Tacoma, lower 20s showing up. There's Portland, some of the lower 20s in the National Blend of Models as well. And one more look here at total precipitation inches on the National Blend of Models. You can see it largely misses Seattle with the first wave there. And then as we warm up, that's going to be too warm. That would be rainfall there. And then we return to more of a, a little bit wetter pattern here as we go through the following week. We'll break that down at a later date. You know, coming up here. Uh, six to 10 day uh, temperature outlook. So still below normal here for the next six to 10 days above normal precipitation, eight to 14 day. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Not much help there. But I, I did want to point out again, I've been mentioning this the last couple of days, we do have no drought across Washington, a little bit across Oregon, a little bit of abnormally dry, um, but there is still some extreme and severe drought across portions of Idaho and Montana. Always check before you go. Avalanche danger out there. Lots of good information. Gives you snow levels and what kinds of avalanche threats you may run into. You can click on Mount Hood, for example, and dive in there. And, you know, it tells you how you can trigger avalanches and what to expect. And wind loaded terrain above 6,000 feet. There's still moderate there for uh, Mount Hood. So, yeah, heads up for that. I show you a lot of nice images here and even have a forecast discussion as well. And we are below normal here across Washington state as far as snowpack is concerned. You can see, you know, if you click there, you can look at Puget Sound snow water equivalent. It's just at 74% of its mean. And this is a La Nina year. So that is not good here, folks. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can, you know, make up this deficit as we go on in through the next couple of months or so. And this is looking at the European kind of shows us moving towards neutral or La Nina as we go on in through maybe the summer and next year. You know, again, we'll be watching that closely. The CFS is not quite as warm across the equatorial Pacific as we go off through September. It just shows us being a neutral. So maybe we're coming up on a neutral year next year. We're probably due for one anyway. So yeah, we'll continue to watch that. But anyway, I hope you guys are having a good day. We'll continue to watch the storm system. Again, it's only Monday right now. The storm doesn't roll into Southern Oregon until about Thursday morning. So tomorrow we'll start to get a better look here uh, you know and try to pinpoint exactly where that track is going to be is seattle going to be under the gun for some snowfall as well how much will fall for portland freezing rain potential into some of the valley areas of western oregon including the coastal range we'll go over that all again tomorrow try to nail down a bit more detail on that and of course as we get closer we'll start to watch the high resolution models come in which will give us a better picture as well so anyway hope you guys are having a good day click like and subscribe we'll do this again tomorrow now we'll talk to you guys then